He's changed the rules and you can no longer access the building unless you have an appointment. When did he change those rules? Just now. He does not have the authority to do that. I came out, I engaged you. That was me doing that. You were out here doing your filming and you stand up for what you believe in and that's what we need more of. How's it going, guys? I'm against it press, and we are coming to you today from Moab, Utah. Um, I am out with watching the Watchmen today, and we are at the Southeast Utah Health Department, which is the uh, smaller building next door to a movie theater that's closed down for the winter. Um, we're just gonna pay a little visit on these folks here today and find out if they honor and respect our right to take video and photographs in public and from publicly accessible areas of public places. Um, let me give you a view of the neighborhood here as best as I can because it's absolutely beautiful. Those of you who know Moab know, uh, and those who don't, it's incredible. And uh, let me give you a time and temperature check here. Today is Thursday, February 11th. It is 12.20 in the afternoon, and it is 55 degrees, sunny and absolutely beautiful in Moab, Utah today. Uh, also just wanna let you know before we get started that uh, as I do from time to time, I am exercising my 2A today as well. How you making out there, Watchman? See what kind of signage they have on the doors, or you want to uh, check out the back? Yeah, is there anything around the back? I don't know, let's go see. Yeah, it's a nice work truck. Is some kind of like uh, what is this em employee uh, lunch area? Pretty cool. The, uh, smoking lounge. Smoking lounge, yeah, that's at the health department. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And if any of you out there, I gotta say it, if any of you out there are still smoking cigarettes, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, and I'm a uh, I'm a hypocrite because I smoked for 23 years, but uh, this year will mark nine years since I quit. Knowing what we know these days, man, give those things up. Uh, so you want to check out the door? Yeah. See what's going on there? <laughs> no smoking within 25 feet of the building. So, uh, that kind of cancels out the uh, smoking lounge in the back. No handshake zone. <laughs> no handshake zone. Wow. Oh, look at that. See, this is why you got to read these orders carefully. You read this and it says face coverings must be worn. This is a requirement in Grand County, uh -huh. right? Then you read the actual press release 
And it says, which requires a face covering over the mouth and nose of all persons in Grand County in all public indoor areas and outdoor public areas where six feet of spacing between persons cannot be maintained. So that means even if you're inside, if you can maintain six feet away from people, yeah. no need to wear the mask, right? But on this one, it says you have to wear the mask. This is why we're out here doing these things. Ambiguity rules the day. But yeah, so you're reading that the same way I am, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... If we go inside, watch them and just uh, stay six feet away from me. I'm assuming, in all seriousness, I'm assuming that uh, most places, people that live in the same household are uh, not included in that, so. So a doctor just came out to throw some uh, cardboard in a dumpster, spotted us, and now he's uh, speaking to the watchman there. What did he say to you? Well, he walks up and says, what are you guys making? And I was like, what are you guys making? And then he looks at my camera, he's like, oh, you got a GoPro? Cool. And then just turns around and walks up. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I'm going to go back over to my corner here and behave. What was that all about? He, he just walked up and said, who are you with? So I asked, who are you with? And he's like, oh, I'm with the health department. What are you guys doing? I'm just, just taking a video. And that was it? Yeah. You saw the, uh, oh, you're standing right here. You saw the doctor and the other yeah. person come out, right? There you go. And he's got it sideways, too. Same thing you're doing. Same thing you're doing. Holding up a camera. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Hi. So I answered a question. I answered a question. Now it's my turn. What are you doing? What's that? I said I answered a question. Now it's my turn. What are you doing? Uh, holding up the camera. Oh, okay, cool. You guys are on public space. There's no problem with it. Uh, you're on public space, and there's no problem with it either. I, I'm not saying there is. Yeah. Yeah. We're cool. Yeah. I'll, I don't have any issues. Yeah. Perfect. Am I what? Against the COVID vaccine or for Neither one. Oh. I'm for anybody doing whatever they want to do. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, all righty then. What I was about to say when he walked out was, is yeah, you could say, why don't you tell people what you're doing when they come up and ask you? Because when somebody walks out, you know, you, you could see things however you want to see them. I consider myself to be uh, very keyed into people's behavior. 
and body language. And when somebody comes out, um, you can usually get a read on whether or not they're generally interested in what you're doing or interested in trying to chase you away and tell you you can't be doing it. Um, so I tend to err on the side of caution and not answer everybody's question. Uh, sometimes I'll just throw a little quick explanation at them uh, to satisfy them and, you know, kind of uh, quash the moment. But, uh, you know, other people, it's just not worth talking to some people. And, uh, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, and if they prove me wrong, I will say I was wrong and then follow up and have a conversation with them. But, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a minute and, uh, been living life for a minute. So, so we'll see. I'm relatively certain at this point that the, uh, authorities have been called. So we're going to stick around for a little while and see what happens. So stand by. Can you hear? I don't. I have no idea. I can't hear. Between this traffic and the distance and the and the and the diapy on his face, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, here you go. Well, fire starter. There you go. R rile the poor lady up, why don't you? That's a good idea. Yeah, make a poor old lady nervous. That's brilliant. No, not at all, man. I believe you're the one making people nervous. Let the poor lady live her life. Leave her alone. Despicable. Absolutely despicable. If this guy gives me a thumbs up one more time, I'm going to tell him what to do with it. Wow. You know... You guys know how I feel about uh, older people, the people that watch our channels, uh, that have followed our channel. I'm sorry. Um, I have a lot of respect for older people, and I uh, give them all the courtesy that I can. Now we have the town crier out here alerting everybody to the obvious. That's fantastic. If you do that 700 more times, you might get somewhere. No, nobody cares what you're doing. You're <laughs> yeah. yeah whatever. Nobody cares. So then why don't you just go on with your day? Do you work here? You don't even work here. Yeah, all right, well, yeah. There you go. Just make sure everybody as they come in. Well, you better go all over the world and do that because it's happening everywhere. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're going to be a busy man. They're gonna call you Johnny, Johnny the fire starter. Awesome, I love that. No, you're just, you're just so full of yourself, you don't even know what you love. I, I only enjoy speaking to genuine people. You're just completely full of it, so I'm, I'm done. So we kind of have the same opinion of each other, right? We have a what? Same opinion of each other? I don't know what your opinion is, nor do I care. Well, okay. well yeah, that's what All right, but I just think it's pretty despicable to try to scare elderly people. That's. I think they have enough worry in this world, and I think they've lived longer than you have, and maybe you should be listening to them. What's the difference? No, what's the difference? Is there anything wrong with what I'm doing? Nobody's had an issue, sir, except for you. You're the only one. You're, you're, the, you're, you're the one out here creating a problem for yourself, not me. Well, that's great. You enjoy putting fear into elderly people's hearts. That's you're a wonderful human being. I do. I, hey, I'm gonna tell people that they're being. Uh, nah, I don't even want to hear it. I'm done. I'm done talking to you. Go on with your life. See you later. Bye. Bye. Toodaloo. Off you go. See ya. Have fun. So now you know. Now he's, now he's going to prove what a fool he is. We already think you're a fool. Do you really want to prove it? Uh, we think you're a fool. Do you want to prove it? Oh, wait, you are. Huh? All right. All right, so here, let's, let's, we'll highlight you. Oh, yes. You want to you be highlighted on camera? We'll, we'll get closer what, so we can... What? What's the YouTube channel that's going on? What makes you think it's a YouTube channel? 
because <laughs> I'm look. We can all play ignorant as much as we want. Oh, you're not playing. It's real oh, life. That's right. <laughs> you guys don't count with. You got. You must be. What are you? I got it back up here, guys. Okay, sorry. Say again. I don't want to interrupt your uh, conscious stream of thought there. What were you saying? I don't have conscious stream of thought. I'm an idiot. I know that. Yeah. 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 Hi. How are you? So we're out here just randomly filming people going into a public health facility. No, you don't. Yeah, that, that's your assumption. You don't know what I'm doing. And um, yeah, let's okay. We can play stupid, but let's not be. Stupid. I'm not playing stupid at all. I'm just telling oh, you, you that you're stupid. you're making an upset. You're making I'm assumptions. Making an assumption. Yes, right. I am. Okay. And the assumption by the presented evidence is you're out here randomly filming people coming into a health facility for some unknown reason. Um, you don't think you're riling anybody up? I'm talking to you two. Am I riling you up? Not. Do I look riled up? No. Do I look riled up? I'm enjoying it. A little this. bit. I'm having fun. Oh, come on, guys. Well, don't have fun at other people's expense. Like, you guys making, uh, filming other You're the only expense. one that's had an issue. Not uh, one, not one client has said a word to me. No, they haven't, because most people are, don't want to be confrontational. Well, and that's I'm, a, I'm, that's a good idea. That's a, yeah, that's an excellent plan. Yeah, it is. Why be confrontational? Right. That's right. why you're over here. So if you, well, no, if you weren't being, if you weren't, involving yourself in my life i wouldn't even be talking to you i was standing there silent minding my own business on a public yes. sidewalk yes you are and you have every right to do that 100 i'm very fully aware of what my rights are oh i know and I, I agree with your rights in fact that's why we live in america is because these rights are here and that's the one of the best things about living in america is that why you live here for one of the reasons i was born here but yeah so what, what are you going to do when they start taking your rights away aha now we get to the point no i'm asking you what are you going to do they're not taking you're, the rights away. Sure they are. You're wearing, not, a you're wearing a diaper on your face. Oh. What do you mean? Now we get to the point now. No, that's not the point. Yes. No, not point. at all. You guys would rather believe in politicians and Facebook than me medical science. So that's... I would rather believe in... So then why aren't you wearing two masks? That's the new recommendation. Oh, I haven't got my second mask. It's in the car. Oh, well, so I guess you don't believe in science? Oh, I believe in science, absolutely. So go get your second mask and put it on then. What do you mean? You can reduce the chance of infecting someone else. Wouldn't you want to do that? Well, of course. Yeah, so put three of them on. And you know what I found out? If you put six of them on, we can end racism. As <laughs> soon as you put on six masks, racism's gone, man. Oh, I know, boy. Can you please go back to the public right boy? We'd appreciate that. Ah, uh, I think we're good. I, I, I do. They're, uh, yeah, I think they they were, so. Uh, Right. Why did you get shot? I did, I didn't watch it. It was quite a little bit. Yeah, he gave it the old college try. Amazing. Can you please move back to the sidewalk? I'm going to respectfully decline your request. Well, this is private property. No, it's not. It's public property. No, it's not. Sure it is. It's owned by the health department. It is not owned by the state. Please move to the sidewalk. This is public property. It's a public health department. Okay. Here. Yeah, you have a good day too. Enjoy yourself. This is the building we're at. And you get, I don't know if you can read what it says there. It might be blurry because I'm too close. Uh, but it is owned by, it says Municipal Building Authority of Grand County. And uh, that's on X I'm looking it up on. So to see you guys now. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're just taking some video and everybody's all. <laughs> What's the video for? Be you didn't get my written approval to videotape me. We don't need written approval. You're out in public. Uh, and especially when you approach the camera, that's giving that's giving first person consent. No, no. Yeah, it is. You have to read up on the law, ma'am. That's the law. That's why I don't explain myself to people like you. Do you think there's any possible chance that they did not call the cops? The one I'm still trying to figure out is the first guy that came out talking. What are you making? Yeah, what are you making? You should have said cookies. Yeah. 
And then yeah, he asked me whether it's a GoPro. I said yeah, and then he just turns around and walks away. Be I'm telling you, they don't even they don't want to because they want to look like they asked. So they so oh that I went out and I asked them politely what they were doing, and they didn't want to tell me. That's they don't really want to hear your answer. They're not going to believe your answer. They don't care about your answer. You would think a public health office. They should be inviting. They should instead of doing all that, they should come out and say, "Hey guys, you want to come in and look at the inside? Is there any information we can give you? Do you want to grab some pamphlets we have available to the public? Anything I can help you with?" And that has happened before, and those experiences go wonderful, uh, wonderfully, and uh, make the place and the staff look great. And, you know, that's the way it should be. But uh, they don't see that as an available option for some reason. I say we go in and ask to speak to a uh, whoever's in charge of this joint. Yeah, sure. Right. I agree. I don't have any food or drink. Hi guys. So, was there a director or a manager of this facility I can speak to? Um, Brady Bradford's in the press office. Oh, not in this office. Okay. Yeah, we're trying I'm to... I'm just wondering what all the hubbub's about, about two guys standing out on the sidewalk with cameras. Oh, we're... I've never seen people with cameras here at the health department ever. That's why we're all curious ourselves. I got you. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, what, I mean, are we doing anything wrong? Do you have any issue with us being here? No, no. I'm not sure. What's your, do you have a YouTube channel? Or something, or? Well, you know what? When we're done, I never like to divulge what I'm doing while I'm doing it. But uh -huh. when I'm done and we're all wrapped up, I'd be happy to explain to you A to Z exactly what I'm doing. Not a problem. Huh? That's actually why I wanted to speak to your director or manager or somebody if they were available, so I could have the conversation directly with the uh, top of the food chain, as they say. You know. The price office number. Oh, so the price is the commanding office. Okay. How far is price? Two hours away. Two hours away. Well, I'm not running over there today. <laughs> No, yeah, we're Tri-County area. All right, cool. Um, yeah. All right, good. No, I mean, if you guys are all good, and I'm all good, and everybody's all good, but I'll uh, definitely, so it's Brady, Brady Bradford. Bradford. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, or Sarah Brady is the director of nursing. But, uh, Sarah Brady and Brady Bradford. Did Brady's, they Did they plan that? Brady? I know. <laughs> Brady, Brady's the top house. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're just going to take a look around real quick, and then uh, I will definitely give them a call and follow up. Not in your public lobby. That's why I was hoping to have this conversation with the director of the facility. Oh, yeah, some people might feel uncomfortable because we got some patients. I feel uncomfortable with yeah. multiple people approaching me outside while I'm trying to make a video. That's right. another reason I wanted to speak to your director. Yeah, could I please ask you not to film your patients? I'm not here to film any of your patients. I don't really care about people. We're just taking a look at the facility yeah. in general. I'm not. I'm not interested in what your patients are doing, right. and I'm. I could pretty much be assured to myself that you don't have any sensitive information that's viewable from a public lobby, no, no, no. right? Right. right. Yeah. And you guys know how the HIPAA laws work, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Thank you, guys. And look at that, now there's nobody in here. Perfect timing, right? That was great, they cleared out. Yeah, make it <laughs> What time do you close? More people. More people coming. We close at five. Well, that's a, this is a public office, man. Five. Okay, but I just want you to understand that this is a public off. This is a public area, so there is no expectation of privacy in public. That's the way the law works, not my opinion. And like I said, we're not here to stick a camera in anybody's face. I'm not interested in any, what any of your clients are doing. Not my issue. Okay. All right. Can you guys wear a mask? Please. Sorry. Can you please wear a mask? Yeah, that's a request. Please. That's also in the law too. Yeah, no, and I'm gonna respectfully decline. I'll be out of here in a minute. Okay. Yeah. And there's nobody in here. And as healthcare professionals, it might be a good idea to ask somebody if they have a medical exemption, which is written into the executive order, before you tell them they have to put a mask on. Right. I, I can ask you to wear a mask, please. Right. Okay. But some people do have legitimate medical. Exemptions. Right? At, time, at that time, they would say so. Yes. Well, maybe. I don't know. Not everybody likes talking about their personal medical situation. Mm -hmm. But I'll carry on. No worries.
All right, well, I just want to, as I'm leaving, I just want to suggest to you that you probably get a lot further with people if what you're telling them is accurate. So I would just do my homework, find out what the laws are, what the rules are, what you can and cannot enforce. And you'd probably carry a lot more weight with people if you're giving them accurate information. Okay. Just a suggestion. All right. Thank you, Have a nice day. Okay. No, no problem. Appreciate you guys. But really, make, you should make people feel a little more welcome here. I mean, this is a public health office. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, I would think. There's a public health office and there is a state mandate to wear masks by law. So you're telling us to follow the law. So why don't you follow the law? Have you, read the, have you read the paragraph on the medical exemptions that are available through the executive order? Sure. Did anybody ask me if I have a medical exemption? No, we won't ask you that. Well, there you go. Right. So, anyway, we do have the right to refuse service to people if, because they can seek. Because why? Because they can seek the... Oh, sorry. You can seek services elsewhere. You have, so you yeah. personally have a right to deny the public health service here at a public health office, that's not accurate. I'm just telling you, I don't want to have an argument with you. You can see your private position to get those services. And if you have any questions on that, please contact our county attorney. I think you should contact your county attorney and educate yourself. This is just that. Okay, well, educate, educate yourself and learn what the facts are. It's very important. I don't want you giving people bad information. And as you can see, there's still nobody in here, so no issues. But, uh, you know, they've all vacated. You know, the ignorant choose to remain ignorant, so nothing I can do about that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I got to ask, did you buy it new off the showroom floor? I did. <laughs> That's fantastic. What what year is it? It's a 51. 51 Pontiac? A Ford. A Ford, I'm sorry. Yeah. 51 Ford. That's awesome. What what model is it? It's a, it's a coupe. I just uh just a 51 Ford coupe. Very cool. Yeah. Does it does it leak oil? I just, no, not, no. Doesn't use oil. Use use a little bit of transmission for oil. There you go. <laughs> That's fantastic. You must have a lot of fun riding around in I it. I do. Very cool. He said, you got to be strong. There's no power steering. Well, you look like a strong guy to me. No, no power brakes. You just got to just have muscle. In. And avoid the parallel parking spots. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, keep smiling. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Appreciate you. I think they, uh, like they hit the panic button or something like that. What do you mean? Well, they were to you were talking to that guy. And... Well, it sounded like either the phone ringing or some kind of like electronic noises and they all just went right in the back. Seriously? Yeah. Maybe I'm just uh, you know, putting things together. No, they may have. They may have hit the panic button. I don't know. It was just weird how they all rushed into the back right after it sounded like the phone rang like twice. Well, if that's the case, let's stick around for a few minutes. Watching the Watchmen and I have a... Uh, standard operating procedure that if the cops are called or we believe they've been called we don't run away we wait around for them um, i a don't want them looking for us and b uh definitely if there's an opportunity to have a conversation with law enforcement you guys know me i'm there and they always go right to that same i gotta say it crap about people's privacy in a public building in a public lobby they got to come up with a better plan, you know? And you forgot to mention the, uh, on their door, how it says, masks are required if you can't be six feet away. We're six feet away. Oh, no, that's my ace card. I was saving that. I'm saving that for the, uh, for law enforcement if they get here. Well, we got a police vehicle pulling up. But, uh, I would assume they're coming here, but maybe not. Oh, he's like broadcasting his radio to the town here. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, well, give it a minute. How we doing? I told you you'd see us again. 
Well, you know, as much as I like talking to you, I don't want to see you multiple times a day, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I wish people didn't call you. Alright. Yeah. So, well, what's going on this time? Same, same old, same old. Same old, same old? Yeah. Okay. Good. I guess what? there's some folks at the health department that uh, need you to explain to them what's going on. Okay. Uh -huh. So, what I got told is the issues that you guys wouldn't wear a mask in there. Is that accurate? Well, first of all, what I'm going to tell you is, is it's written right on their door. The way the mask order reads is if you are unable to maintain six feet distance from people, inside or outside, then you have to wear a mask. If you are able to maintain six feet of distance, then it's not a requirement. Right. And when we, so, were, we were in the lobby, there was no okay. clients in there. So I agree with you, but a business does have the right to restrict access. To a private right. business does, not a public entity. This is a public business. Okay. And we do our research. I checked on Onyx. This is public property. It's owned. It's a municipal building. Okay. Yeah. We do. You know, we do all our research. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm laying down my sergeant. He's okay. Spawning down here too. Okay. And then there's also beyond that. There's also a medical exemption written into the into the order. Right. So there's a couple of reasons why somebody might not be wearing a face cover. I, I don't disagree with you, man. Yeah. I meant to remind you that you had that on, well, I forgot. It, it, I'm having a hard time getting it shut off. Sorry. Yeah. So I just have to ask you again, it's all red. And what was your badge number again? What's uh, all red? 2T5 is in Tango. 2T5, thank yep. you, appreciate that. Not a problem. So we saw Officer Allred earlier today at the post office. I'll leave a uh, link in the description of that video. <laughs> he did a great job over there. We'll see how he does here. Okay. Although Sarge is coming, so it's really up to him. Right? <laughs> that's the best, you guys, that's the best little ace card you guys have up your sleeve. Just call the sergeant and then you're off the hook, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's not really why I called him, but. It's not really why so what's your uh while we're waiting what's your take on what's going on here what do you mean well you said something about their their issue is that we weren't wearing masks right. i guess or whatever's well, going that, on so that's all i got man i haven't had talk had a chance to talk to them yet oh okay so i gotta talk to them before i go much further gotcha but well, you can certainly talk to them i'm not going to run away from you okay. all right i'm gonna run up here talk to the sergeant real quick and then probably head in there you got it Oh, so what is the Sarge in that vehicle there? Yeah, I'll say. How are we doing, Sarge? How are you? Going, gentlemen? Doing good, man. How about you? Not too bad. So, Sergeant Palmer. Yes, sir. And can I just ask your badge number, sir? Me, 2T7. 2T7, thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate that. So, it sounds like we got a phone call. You guys didn't want to wear masks. That sounds like that's really their only concern. So. That's their only concern is that we didn't have masks on? Yeah. yeah. So, I just explained to this officer. You can read the, uh, you're probably familiar with it anyway. Uh, but the way the order is written, inside or outside of this public building, uh, the only reason you would have to, the requirement to wear a mask only comes in when you're unable to maintain six feet of distance from other people, right? Understandable. Yeah. Uh, when we were in there, there was nobody else in there. Okay. So. Fair enough. And then there's also medical exemptions. Right. 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 So, Which I do know. I do know of those. So. So there are several reasons why somebody might not be wearing a mask. Absolutely. I'm sorry it uh, inspires people to call the police. Right. But, you know. right. Right. It sounds like this isn't the first time we've chatted with you guys today either. So. No, not even the first the time this office. year. Yeah. Well, actually, so, that was last year. So you were, if I remember right, so we've, we've had some First Amendment auditors come through a couple times, but uh, okay. I want to say, so yeah, you guys were 
roughly, you were roughly a year ago. We're the ones that found the keys and the purse behind the police right. department. That's right. Officer Cordero. Yep, that was us. Well, I can appreciate what you guys are doing, exercising your rights. And you, I, you're the second First Amendment auditors that I've ran into. And the last one I talked to, he was a little, he was pretty confrontational, kind of an in-your-face, right. almost attacking kind of guy. So, Who was? Do you remember who it was? I can't. No. What did he look like? He wouldn't tell me his name. So, what did he look we were like? Trying to have a conversation. I know a shorter, younger guy. Um, shorter, younger guy. Well, it's uh, the shorter part could have been me, but the younger guy's not me. So, no, no it definitely wasn't you. Like I said, you're far more respectful. Well, you know what? I think you, because uh, what we're doing is, is our goal here. Um, while we have a chance to talk, while we're standing out here. There's a big divide between law enforcement and the citizens in this country for all the wrong reasons. I agree. Uh, so a part of the major reason that we do this is to try to close that gap through simple dialogue and conversation. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So that's what it's all about. We're just uh, trying to make the world a better place. And some people don't understand it because we have unconventional methods, right? right? But, you know. I always like to say that there's something that people have forgotten about these days called middle ground, right. right? So you might not understand what I'm doing, you might not agree with what I'm doing, but as long as I'm not out creating a victim out of anybody, Absolutely. you can respect my right to do what I do and I can throw that right back at you. I don't have to approve of everything you right. do, but we can find that middle ground, shake hands, respect each other and move Absolutely. on. Right? I appreciate that. I guess I, guess I understand that. I guess I understand what you guys are doing as far as exercising your rights. I think the methods are, obviously, like you said, they're a little bit di different. Of course, different. yeah. But, you know, well, especially in the. Who am I to who am I to judge that and say that that's the right or wrong way to exercise those rights? No. I appreciate it. Well, especially in the auditing community, um, there's a lot of guys out there who are like the guy you met up with. Right. So we're also making a very concerted effort to try to bring the whole community up and raise the standard, right. and actually be constructive and fruitful in our conversations right. and have some positive outcomes Absolutely. and create better understanding. Uh, some people like the folks that are working in the health department right now are just completely shut down. They're following what they believe to be their orders or how they perceive the order to be. Right. And they don't, that's not always accurate. Yep. And you know, that causes, uh, can cause some issues for you guys and for the general public. So I think it's important that these things get brought to light and discussed and... Absolutely. Well, I, I think a gentleman like yourself can imagine the predicament that we're put in as law enforcement with these types of orders, you know what I mean? Right. And what is the constitutionality, constitutionality of them? Because nothing that I've experienced in my lifetime, I dare say it's probably nothing you've even experienced in your life. No, so no. It's, it's weird times. And well, as far as wearing a uh, mask is concerned, right. I believe that that is something that, you know, if somebody decides to that they want to wear a mask because it makes them feel better, they should absolutely be allowed to wear a mask. Absolutely. But if you remember two years ago, let's just say to go far enough back, if you saw somebody walking into a liquor store with a full face mask on, you would have got a phone call, absolutely. right? Or a bank. So, you know, it's the same mask, it's the same face covering, but the perception now is different. Right. And the reasoning behind it is different. So, but I think, if somebody wants to wear a mask and somebody feels like that makes them feel better or they're doing some good for the community, Absolutely. I'm all for it, man. Yeah. But if somebody else has a medical condition or a religious reason or a personal belief or for whatever reason doesn't want to wear the mask, then they shouldn't have to wear it. You know, that's just the, that's my belief. Right. I would you agree know? with you. I would agree on every point that you make. So. I mean, unfortunately, you know, when you're at work, you signed a contract yeah, and signed exactly. up for that. And that's, you know, yeah. that's a whole different story. But uh, like, for example, one of the people working here was telling me that this is private property. It's a public health office. I have OnX on my phone. I know it's not a private property. It's owned by a municipal government agency, right? So. And I'm glad to see the guys in Moab here, sheriff's office included, you know, your guys are willing to have the conversations and talk things out yeah. and try to get that middle ground understanding and figure it out. Yeah. You know? It doesn't always go that way. I'm glad to hear that you think that way. So yeah, yeah. We try. We try. All right. So all I found out is that mainly they were worried because a lot of their clients were getting uncomfortable with you guys recording in there. You know, that's yeah. That's what they said their concern was. Okay. okay. So so. When you got the call, the concern was not wearing a mask, and now it's... It was also the mask thing, but I also talked to him about as far as the... All right, I'm just trying to stay clear, so go ahead. Yeah.
Um, anyway, so that was their main concern was the, uh, a lot of their clients felt uncomfortable. I guess they took a couple of them out the back door, just not being comfortable being in a medical service building, getting recorded, leaving or entering, if that makes sense. You know what? It does make sense because of the way these people are acting here. I'll give you another little bit of my speech. I won't give you the whole thing, but these people, yourselves included, but any public officials, anybody in a public capacity as an employee has the ability to steer the ship, right? right? So just as they just put people in fear and riled them up over a couple of guys with camera, they also, could have also just said to them, hey, they're not doing anything wrong. They're within their rights to be here taking video. And that generally calms everybody down and then the situation goes away. So if they chose to, to escalate it, that's, you know. And I explained that to them in there and they're well aware of what it is. And it's really where we're at, man. I mean, you guys are good to go if you want to take off or whatever you want to do. Yeah, no, but I think it's, so how did you leave with them? Because I think it's very important that they understand the law. Because here's the other thing. Outside of the law, just if you're having a conversation with your kids, you're having a conversation with your wife, whatever it is, you got to stick to the facts and you have to be educated about what you're talking about, right. right? So if you just start barking at people, you can't do this, this is the law and it's totally made up nonsense, then I lose my faith in anything you're saying. Right. It subverts the whole conversation and then you wind up at some yelling match or something I don't even want to be involved in. But if I'm coming from a place of I know what the rules are, I know what the law is and I'm giving you good information, that's a more constructive way to handle things. So my suggestion to them is, is just educate yourself. If not, they don't have to learn all the law. Lawyers don't know the law, right? right? <laughs> Police officers don't know the, the law in its entirety. Oh, it's I don't know the law in its entirety. But when you're working in a public capacity at a public health office, learn the pertinent rules and regulations and the laws concretely so you know absolutely what you're talking about, especially if you're a supervisor or a manager or a director, right? right? If you're somebody that's in charge. Absolutely. Because then that avoids them having to call you. It's a waste of resources. Like you said, when you first walked up, you don't want to run into me 15 times a day. You know, I mean, that's it's unnecessary. Right. So that's all it is. But I think it's very important for them to understand what the reality of the situation is. So I don't know if you explained that to them when you were in there. I, I think I got it through to them as far as what your guys' rights are and what theirs are to protect their clients. But I mean, they do still have a duty to protect their clients. But, uh, that's not necessarily your issue, if that makes sense. As in you. No, and I'll tell you what, we go to health departments all over the right. country. Um, first thing that always gets brought up is HIPAA laws. And do you guys know how HIPAA laws yeah. work? Well so, aware of to an extent, yeah. I'm well aware of HIPAA. I used to work health and safety. Okay, so you know, you know, the way HIPAA laws work is the onus is on them to protect the public's private information. Right. I, sh I am certainly confident that there is no private information on display in a public lobby, right? right? So I would hope not. it's yeah. since I'm not HIPAA trained and I'm not HIPAA certified, it's impossible for me to break HIPAA regulations. That's not the way it works, right? So, I, so but they but they working in a health department office should certainly know that. Oh yeah, no, they they right? know HIPAA laws as far as that goes. There, as, as I understood it, their issue stemmed from their patients being concerned about being recorded while in a medical facility getting ready to receive medical treatment of some sort or another. Right. That was, that was... And I don't want to come across as somebody who's totally insensitive to that. I do get that. But their medical issue is not being discussed in the lobby. They get taken back into a private examining room and they have those conversations in private. That's right. Well, so, and that's what I explained it. As long as you guys aren't talking about their medical stuff in the lobby right. or anything of that nature, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and... You know, I was kind of explained, it's not against the law to record somebody in a public space. Not at all. It never has been, and it likely will never be. No expectation of privacy in public. Right. Yep. And I, me personally, I leave all my private stuff at home, man. I'm, you know, right. I don't drag my private business out into the public. Absolutely. Right. And even if I'm, uh, if it was me going into that health office, I wouldn't care if somebody was filming in there. How do I know they're not doing some promotional video for the health department? I don't know what they're doing. Right. You know? If the doctor came out and started asking me, private health information in front of somebody that was filming then i would say to the doctor hey can we go in the back and you know but that's all it is that's all it is so it's an exercise of rights you know what we're doing yep. we're not looking to ruin anybody's day we're not looking you know Absolutely. little old ladies going in i'm going to hold the door for her and say yes ma'am and that's you know that's the way it is um but just to i'll, I'll give you two points of clarification here one is when you guys leave, we're gonna go back in, do a quick loop through the lobby for probably 30 seconds to a minute, be out of here, they'll probably never see us again. And the reason we do that is so that they're not confused about what happened here and they realize that we do have a right to be here. Uh, the other thing is, is we're cutting out for the day after this one so you won't see us again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think, I think, sorry, my name is, my first name's Braden. Jason. Jason. Pleasure to meet you, Braden. Ben, nice to, nice meet, to you. meet you. So, 
I think we were talking a little bit about that whole middle ground thing, and I think the big thing is, is I mean, you understand why we're getting called out here. Oh, I do. Of course. Ultimately, the legality, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people would say legal, moral, ethical, right? So, and I don't think necessarily anything you guys are doing violate any three of those, but that whole middle ground thing, people have obviously a very, just a gun on your hip. It doesn't bug me. Why? Because I carry one around and it's my thing and I love them. But for other people in this community, it's a very different thing and it's they're not used to seeing it. We don't have a ton of people that open carry around. Okay. So you, I guess what I'm saying with that middle ground is the whole safety thing that they were talking about, I feel like it's more that direction versus like a worry about a violation of their privacy. Well, but just think about scores and I appreciate everything you're saying and I think you're being absolutely genuine and professional with me, so I appreciate that. But you gotta think, the call came in is we're not wearing masks, right? right? Then it's we're in the lobby taking video of people. Right. Then what you just mentioned about the firearm. Right. So what is it really about? You know what I mean? What's really the issue? And what the real issue is, is people don't like it when their control gets taken away from yeah, them. It's just a comfort. That's what the issue That's is. is. Totally right, they're, they're used to barking orders at people, like some police officers do. And they're just, I've actually had police officer, a police officer, at least one, Say to me, we're not used to people not doing what we tell them to do. <laughs> well, well, get used to it. Well, because, and, and honestly, it's kind of true. And I'm, I wouldn't argue right. that. Well, but that goes back to what I was general, saying. Generally, when we respond to something, like right now, I have no control over you because you haven't done anything legal. Usually. Right. 98% of the time when we're responding to something, that's not the case. We're responding to a call for right. somebody who's committed a crime, and we do have control over that situation. Right. Right. So... To, to an officer, yeah, when we're when we're getting phone calls and coming up to stuff like this, it's not a situation that we're comfortable with because we are so we are so used to when I'm when I'm at work when I'm wearing this, I'm getting called around to people committing crimes. Right. So I am used to being. In well, control, so. I'll give you I this. See where that officer, it's an officer safety type. <coughs> yeah. Right. If we, if we don't have control of the situation where crimes are being committed, then that puts everybody there at risk. If there's a crime being committed. Yeah, that's absolutely right. right. There's that caveat of the if there's crime committed. But now what you're dealing with here is, there is no law broken, no, nothing morally, exactly. nothing. So what you're dealing with here is people getting scared and afraid, right? Right. So you've been put in that situation involuntarily, right? So the best thing you could do now in this situation is to quell their fears, yeah. if that's the reality of the situation. Like so this. the best thing to do is go in there and tell them, no, these guys aren't bothering anybody, they're not doing anything wrong, they're just Find taking some video and then Help them understand what you're doing, find the middle ground, and then we all go our separate ways. And then the next time it happens, right, then they have a choice to either remember this situation and know what was going on, right. or to start the whole thing up all over again. Absolutely. And then you have to ask yourself who's really calling you out here and who's really wasting your time. Right. right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's all it is. All right, gentlemen. And I gave you a minute to lean up against the truck, so I'm glad <laughs> I could do that for you. Right? No, but I got to tell you, and I'm not, I said it before, I'm not trying to blow any sunshine up your skirt here, but you, Moab Police Department, we've been here several times. We've done several videos here, and I think you guys are always very cordial and professional. Um, so I don't care what they say about you. I think you guys are good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick, before you go back in there, uh, he, the director, has... The director's not here. Oh, sorry. Maybe the director... The district director. Director's Brady Bradford, and I have their phone number if yeah, you want to yeah, call. Right, yeah. Yeah. So... I want to give him a call. The reason being is Orion, who is the, I don't know what his position he's, here is. He runs, he he runs, run, he runs this, this building. facility here locally um, in okay. our he's, county. He's changed the rules and you can no longer access the building unless you have an appointment. When did he change those rules? Just now. He doesn't have the authority to do that. And you know, you know he doesn't have the authority to do that. That's what he, See, that's what I mean. Now, if you allow him to do that, you're fostering his fear. I can't stop him from locking that door. Can't you can't stop, stop him from door. locking the door, but you can't stop me from trying to go in either. So that puts, see, now you're in a situation, right? right? Yep, we are. So if they, so what I'm gonna do is if that's the case, I'll go up to the door, I'll try to open the door. If the door's locked during business hours, which is against uh, government policy for public health offices, that's a violation of their own policy. So if he did lock the door, then I file a formal complaint against him and the right. staff here, which is unnecessary, but he's playing games at that point. So if that's what he wants to do, he's opening the door up to himself for that. Right. Because it is, it's a violation of their rules and regulations to lock the door during business hours. And it's also a violation of the fire marshal's code. Right. So they can't do that. So I would it's say- not, it's I'm, still, still not ultimately nothing that involves us at that point, so. Well, it is. It is, if they're violating- Well, fire marshal's office would deal with that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. 
Well, so I'm just saying, so that's what I'll do then. If I'll, I'll walk up, try to go in. If I can't go in, I'm certainly not gonna kick the door in. I'll right. realize they locked the door. He doesn't have the authority to, to decide that walk, it's walk-ins or uh, appointments only. That's not, that's outside of his mandate. I can assure you that. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know, I don't know what their rules are. I have no idea. idea. And I don't want to get the guy in trouble, but if he decides that's what he's going to do, then he's going to have some, he's going to have to answer to some things. Right. But well, that's up to him. It sounds like maybe the, a good course of action is to call and talk to the, the actual regional super. Well, no, you got a guy here claiming to be in charge. So well, we'll, it sounds we'll, like the gentleman whose phone number you have is the one that made that decision. You know what? Phone conversations never go well. Yeah. I'm one of those face-to-face -face <laughs> guys. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I don't disagree I would with not that. Disagree. Anyhow. It's even when one of your detectives is doing an investigation, they might make a phone call, but if it gets serious, you know, you got to come yeah, in and talk to me. Yeah, exactly. yeah so. Exactly. So, like I said, uh, I'm not going to try to force my way into the building. If they want to have the door locked, I'm going to document that the door's locked, right. what time it is, what day it is, and we'll be on our merry way. All right, yep. gentlemen. All right? Okay. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Pleasure meeting both of you. Yep. Same with you. And it was... Jason. Jason. Yep. yep. Jason and Ben. Ben. Yep. 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 Okay. Nice meeting you all. Yep. Oh, and I also let your sergeant know good news for you. After this one, we're cutting out for the day, so you won't see <laughs> us again. Stay safe. Sa Seriously, on a human level, stay safe. I appreciate that. Appreciate it very much. Honor your oath. And we had the discussion a little while ago, and I'll ask you the question because you weren't there. What's a good police officer's worst enemy in this world? Their worst enemy? Yep. I'll answer it for you. Bad cop. Oh, I agree. Keep an eye on those guys and don't let them get away with it because they're not doing you any favors and they're getting good cops across this country hurt and killed every day. I agree 110%. All right, guys. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate you. So he's going to lock up and have appointments only come in. That's what he wants to do. That's what he can do. All right? Yeah. And if that's the case, guys, I will... Uh, Put the contact information for the health department here in the uh, description of this video. And uh, if anybody chooses to seek redress, you are more than welcome to call up and let them know what you think about them locking the doors on us uh, in the middle of the day here during normal business hours. Uh, if you do that, please stay professional and businesslike. No cursing and yelling. And uh, that's it. So he just locked the door. Look, they just printed that up. He just printed this piece of paper up to make an appointment call. Amazing. So they've locked the door. Door's locked, look. There you go. All right, well, that gentleman right there is the guy that locked the door. Well, all right, guys, that's... Uh Hold on a second, we have uh, the mouthpiece coming back. Fire starters coming back for another round. Howdy. Yes. I was gonna say I was being a jackass early and I apologize. Cause I gotta say, we may not respect uh, have each other's beliefs, but I respect you for coming out here and standing up for what you believe in. And that I, I got to say, I've got to Well, you know what? I respect you for saying that 100%. Thank you very yeah. much, sincerely. Yeah. No, I really water, water under the bridge, man. Okay, I, I and you know what? If if, if I if you perceived me coming across as being rude or crass or anything like that, I apologize for that. I understand. I came out. I engaged you. That was me doing that. You were out here doing your filming, and you stand up for what you believe in, and that's what we need more of. Well, you're a good man. So I I, I apologize for me. No, no need to no need to ever say it again. I accept your <laughs> apology 100, right. and I I think you're a good person for going that route. Yeah, and this nice. is this is my son, by the way. Oh, nice. And uh, that's what I teach my son. I always teach yeah. my son that, if, you know, John Kennedy said it the best. Uh -huh. A mistake, an error does not become a mistake until you fail to correct it. Yeah. So uh, you've corrected your I, error, I, and I, I hope I have that, as well. Yeah, yeah. I got thinking about it. It's like, you know, I didn't need to say that like I did. And it's like, for people come out and stand up for what you believe in. Not many people do that. Do you know what we believe in? Uh, what we're standing up for? It's a little piece of paper called the Constitution of the United States. Yeah. So this is an exercise of rights. Okay. That's all we're doing. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I understand. That's why I say I'm out here and I respect you for being out here because this this is what makes America America. No, and I thank you. I really feel better about the fact that you yeah. came out and said that, and I appreciate you for doing that. And uh, are you you live here locally? Yeah, I am a local. All right, so maybe you'll have that conversation with some of the other folks that were here today. Yeah. I and just let them know what was going on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.
we're, we're, we're out here fighting for everybody's rights, man. I'm certainly not teaching my son to be a bad person. No, and I don't think you are because you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be doing. Right. And you, we're you know what we're doing? We're making people think. Yes, exactly. And that's that, all. That's it. That's, and that's, got, that's it. That's how I probably left this. I started thinking, and it's like, you know what? No. You're out here doing something. Well, you're a true gentleman and a scholar, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No, thank you, sir. You have a good day. All right, right brother. Bye. That's and my name's Jason, by the way. I'm Dan. Dan, pleasure to meet you. It's my son, Ben. Dan. Nice yeah. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Stay safe. Well, all right, guys. I wasn't expecting that to end that way, but uh, good on him. Good on him. That's exactly what I was talking about before. Um, excellent. I'm glad he came. I feel better about that now. That's fantastic. Um, as far as these guys locking the doors, bunch of garbage. Uh, they just don't get it. They don't understand. Um, and that's a shame. But uh, I do have the... Uh, director of Southeast Utah's health department's phone number. Uh, if anybody's interested, this is the contact information that's gonna be in the description. Um, gentleman's name is Brady Bradford, and Mr. Bradford's phone number is 435-637-3671. 435-637-3671. Again, it'll be in the description. Uh, give Mr. Bradford a call and let him know what you think. Again, keep it professional. Keep it respectful, constructive. So uh, that's it. And I always like to remind you that if you appreciate these videos, you enjoy them, you like what we do, uh, you think there's some value to it, and you want to support what we do, um, I invite you to like, share, comment, subscribe. All that stuff helps our channels out tremendously and doesn't cost you a penny. Um, I invite you to do the same thing for watching a Watchman. And... Uh, that's it. So as I told the officer, we're going to wrap it up for today. We're going to hop back in the truck, head back to the hotel. I'm jumping in the shower, and we're going to go get some dinner. So uh, that's it. So coming to you from the Southwest Utah Health Department. Be with you in one second. Watching the Watchmen. Amagansett Press. Catch you on the next one, guys. Out.